Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this awesome looking Android dongle. In this case, it's called Bus TV's HD5. It comes with 4 GB of DDR4 RAM and also 32 GB internal storage. Except that it comes with 10100 LAN, 5 GHz of Wi-Fi. On top of that, this comes with Android 11 and it comes with a remote called BT400. This have its own little app inside. And I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family. Make sure you click the notification icon, select all, in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out this app. And don't forget to click the click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. So here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this power adapter. Now here's the best part. The power adapter, one side is USB Type-C in order to power it up. The other side is USB 2.0, which will be connecting to the power adapter, which we're going to cover next. And here is the power adapter. It's really nicely created. Now you can make this to be universal too, but they're only going to give you this little brick. Now this is 5 volt 2 amp created for Canada and United States. Here's the plug for it. That's how easy it is to open it and close it so that we can take it with you anywhere you go. Now, that's not the only thing. If you look in the top part where the USB is, you also have the Buzz logo, which makes it very personal when you look at it. It's really nicely designed. Now, this box also comes with two energizer batteries, which is AAA. Now, it is also coming with this Bluetooth NIR mixed remote which is called BT400. Now this is same remote that they have placed in the X5 series from Buzz TV. But you can see that it is really nicely designed. Let's go first and check it out to see how good this is designed. You can see the way that it has been placed. This part is a little bit bigger for the battery, which is included in the box. But once you go to the back, you have a little part so you can put your finger so you know exactly how you're going to be holding it. And this part is the top. It has a little cut to it and the bottom is where the battery sits and it also have a little barcode so that way you can scan it and you exactly know what type of manual will be part of it so that way you're never going to look for paperwork it's all going to be online with this little scanner right over here and it does indicate that this is bt400 now i like that little part so when you put it on the ground it sits properly and that's not the only thing you can see from the top that all the designs are there. When you look on the top part, there's the IR sensor. And then when you go around, there's nothing around here. But here's the little part. When you go to the top part, you have one power button, which is going to be source for your TV too. So you can, you can control your TV power. And that way you can also turn off your HD5, which they have indicated to us. Also, you have a source button, which will be taken care of by your TV. Now, go and you have the media buttons, which is play and pause, fast forward and rewind. Go in the bottom part of it, you have a menu. And then the buzz TV button, which is the live TV button. Also, you have a guide. You have a nice navigation key with the OK in the middle. And then you have the return key, home button and the static mouse. Go in the bottom, you have the volume up and down. You have a little button for the back. And also you have the info button. You have a channel up and down, which makes sense when you go inside of the Buzz TV app itself. You have the color buttons, which will be programmable using this smart remote app inside of the box. And then you have all the keys, which you need to go to your proper channels. Now, if you look in the bottom, you have channel down and channel up, and then their logo is nicely printed in the bottom. And that's about it for the remote itself. We will connect it in a few seconds. We will show you how this functions. Now, the next part is the card that they have placed inside of it. This is a really cool way to get all the guide and also remote information in this. So this we do not have to worry about misplacing it. So the guide is when you go to this website, it will give you the proper guide for the dongle that is included in this. And this is for the smart remote, which we are just showing you on this corner right over here, how it is. And now we will go through to show you once you scan this part, how it is you can see it right over here and this is how the guide will be now when you flip it in the back so this way you do not have to worry about flipping it all the time to get the proper code so you can get it on the screen now the next part is the actual hd5 unit you can see it that it is really nicely designed i like that little cut that goes on the sides 
now going on the front you have this HDMI cable because it's going to hide behind your TV there's a little cover I took it off so this is just a regular HDMI now going around it's really nicely designed I really like that but this is going to hide behind your TV so it's not going to be a USB dongle anymore now just to show you the little differences this is their old stick which Buzz TV brought up not that long ago so this is how much they changed now there is a lot of differences between them now if I go around this one just have just a USB and then the connection was only micro USB connection and that was the reset and then there's a micro SD card reader on this now when we put this aside we go to this here's the big difference that part will let light up so you know that it is powered on now when you go on one side of it you have a reset button if you hold that for a couple of seconds it will give you the pop-up on the screen you can repair your remote as a bluetooth and also if you hold this for 30 seconds it will factory reset your whole dongle Go into the back part of it there is a lan connection which is 10 100 then you have a usb 2.0 connection then you have a power connection which is 5 volt 2 amp and this one is not micro usb this is usb type c connection so that means is if you ever misplace your power you can use your phone charger to power it up and going around there's nothing around anymore but when you go to the back you have a little sticker for your serial number and mac address and on the top it tells you about the fcc id and also model number everything has been written over here so there is a huge difference between the regular stick that they have and also the hd5 so this is how nice it will look we will go ahead and connect and we will show you how you will be able to power this up and then on the screen we will pair the remote and go next to give you more information all right so here is the remote we will open to put the batteries in so we can use this for very first time now i have to mention that this remote is backlit but once we turn it on you can see the backlit we will show you on the screen all right so enough said let's connect it and that part is done now let's go ahead and connect connect the hd5 now i know that you have to connect this at the back of a tv which we are going to show you right now but in order to connect it to the actual capture card we are going to use our connector which is going to be like this and then we're going to connect it to the power and you do require to have a usb type c connection and go ahead and connect it and you can see the light right now is lit that means it is turned on and let's flip and get it on the screen so we just powered up and now it's just going through to get us on the main screen so this is the first icon that we're going to see is the buzz logo and now we're waiting for the animation to go through So now once we are on this screen, we have to grab our remote as we are showing you on the screen, press the OK and the home button for about three to four seconds until you see this little light flashing. And then on the screen, it will tell you that the remote is found and voila, now we are connected. It says Buzz TV BT400 and now it goes through to the welcome screen welcome screen is very simple just grab your remote and select your language and just so let's go through and connect it first once you enter your password just click on done and it will go through now it says that it is connected successfully now this is a very very first time going through so yes it will check to see if there is any updates available and if not this is what happens you will go through to go next and it will install the preloaded apps that is part of this dongle itself so we're just going to wait for this to go through and there is another update for the remote itself and you can see that just press ok and now it's just going through to get the update for your remote yes you connected via bluetooth don't worry don't press any button on your remote just wait for this to be done this is another full update that they have processed so that way your remote will click properly with your dongle in this case with the hd5 now if you do have the x5 the same similar update will go through in order to get this up to date so we just wait for this to happen it will take a couple of seconds you may see your remote blink for a couple of seconds and if not that's fine but your remote should work 
automatically like this so this is their new look and how everything looks but just to help you guys out right now with the static mouse this is how it works and yes this is their main look so this is the bus tv5 look for the hd5 you have the bus tv on the top now go on you have the settings then you have the date and time and then the weather now the weather also have a little tweak which we will cover in this video so i will turn off my mouse in this case static mouse so this week we can select the actual apps so starting from the live tv vod pvr and epg now they don't have picture in picture in the screen on this model itself and same with the x5 but they have replaced this icon with another one called radio so if your provider do support and bring you with the radio it will show up as an icon right next to epg except that you can see there is all apps so that we can select it and all apps will show up that is right now just loaded in this and you can also add some shortcuts Here's another really cool thing. I know that this is just added in the bottom. Now, this is also all the app. But if you want to move one of these to be first one on the list, just because you have too many icons here and it goes out of the screen, don't worry. Just click OK on this couple of seconds and you get this little pop up. Click move and then move it to be first one on the list. In this case, that's what I'm going to do and press here. And now it's going to be first one on the list, which is beautiful. Another good part is that you can go through and check for OTA update. And if there is one available, you can click on it and it will show you yes, available or no. So that's another really cool thing. The other part that I really like is going to be the change the settings. So if you go on the top, this is what you will see as an little setting so yes everything is over here so right now i'm connected as wi-fi bluetooth is on and lan connection is off now remember this dongle do have lan which we will test in a couple of seconds except that the same update which we have in the bottom called buzz tv ota is over here too and then you can also add your own background and then buzz utility now buzz utility is very big it has really cool stuff inside of it the main thing that i really like is the weather settings so you can change from celsius to fahrenheit this is where you come to process it except that the remote control is over here too so you can have the backlight on or off right over here this is one place but there is another place too that you can play with that and also volume control this is called max volume once you source pair with your tv that means is once you source it with tv and you have to press the volume up or volume down it will it will use your tv to play with the voice except that this is going to be very hard for you to bring the volume down or up now if you want to use it on your box alone then you can just click on this and it will get rid of it from your tv so you can have your own box volume so you can turn it off and now when i press the volume up or volume down you can see that the volume shows up in the bottom which is going to be for your unit itself only now there are some different home screens that they have selected this part so we will get out of it the next part is going to be the settings so when you select it all the settings comes up the best part is that a lot of people ask how do i factory reset if i ever have a problem don't worry so what you need to do is go into settings which is right on the top right over here go to settings and then go to device preferences and then go to about and over here you will see factory reset you can select go to factory reset it will ask you again if you want to factory reset everything which i'm not going to do right now but then it will take about three minutes for it to totally reset and come back to the main screen as a welcome screen so you can reset up your remote and go next but over here you can see your model number your android version and more all going to be in the bottom so then always check your internet first before you go next now the next part that i really like to always talk about is going to be some benchmarking so remember the first thing that we will go through is going to be aida64 now under aid 64 a lot of things comes with raw information but they do have some issues and i will bring it up so i know that there's going to watch these guys are going to watch this and they're going to fix the app itself once you go in you can see the manufacturer name is dried logic the model number is hd5 which is done properly now go down the platform is s4 the ram is four gigabyte and the another thing that i have to mention is 
blur out a few parts of it and then the ram part is there so how much is available it shows up and then the internal storage and how much has been used and how much is available are underneath of it so once you scroll down you can see that it says bluetooth s4 plus that's what they have to fix because it is not accurate according to what we know and also seen the actual board this is bluetooth 5.0 and it's supposed to show it as 5 not 4. The next part is the CPU. So CPU shows everything properly too. There are quad core right over here. Now, if you go up, it is on ARM Cortex A35, which is running on 2004 megahertz. Now going down, this build is made for the 64 ARM, but it is running on 32 bit mode. And going down, there are the ranges so it goes up to the maximum and come back. The CPU utilization is roughly about 20%. It doesn't go over that. The scaling governor is scheduled. Display on this as a native resolution is 1080p, but you can go up to 4K and 60 Hertz. The DPI on this is 61. The GPU is running on ARM and it is Molly G31, which is a single core processor and it is 60 Hertz. The OpenGL on this is 3.2 which means is if you want to run some games it will run it really smoothly you're going to love it once you start playing some games on this unit itself now once you go into your network you can see that the wi-fi is there but if you want to scroll down a little bit it says 5g network is supported which is really good android on this is android 11 which is red velvet cake you can see the api on this is on 30 and the security patch is not that old which is really good now going under terminal it only shows the actual cpu on this which is running about 60 celsius which is really good now the best part is the codex you can go down this is supporting a lot of codecs and some of them are been duplicated you can see that it's running twice which is really good a lot of different video formats are going to be supported on this so this chip do support av1 and avc you can see that EVC2, AVS2, everything is going to be supported under this and it will play it very nicely for you. The next thing we're going to launch is going to be Geekbench. So let's click on it. Now we already run this. So for single core, we received 116 and for multi-core, we received 392. Now running OS 11 on the S905 Y4 chipset, this is a really good number. The next thing we're going to launch is going to be YouTube app. So here you go. This is the 4K quality. So you can click on it. And yes, by default, it is going to play you the 4K in proper color. Now that's not it. So here you go. This is the best part. You can see that right now the capture is on 1080p. There's about 339 frame drops out of this money. You can see that it is not that much, but it is running on 4K and 30 hertz. It is 100 out of 100. And you can see the codecs that they're using as AV01, which we want to check it out to make sure it plays. So there you go. It is AV1, which is really good. And then the OPUS, and it is running nicely. But again, you can see out of 2000, we only have is 339 frame drops using this. But you can see how nice and clear it is right now playing. Now, the next thing we're going to test is going to go through is going to be your Buzz TV Smart Remote app. This is very big and all the time that we communicate with Buzz TV, they always tell us to play with this. So here we go. Number one is you can source spare your TV. Now, in this video, I'm not going to capture this part because it requires a few minutes and that way we can process it properly so we have a different tv setup and if we get enough time for this video we will add that inside of it probably right now except that here you go this is how we're going to go next the next part is the backlight on or off so when it says on that means it's not working when you click on it to be off then the backlight will work so that's how easy it is for you to see the backlight which i'm showing you right now the next part is the setup color key, which is very self-explanatory to you. You can see that like on the screen right now that on this remote, you have these, these color buttons. There are four of them. I know that the static mouse goes a little bit wacky when you try to play with it, but it is showing you that these are the four colors and that's what you're going to see over here. So you can set it up and this is very good for you to play with. So this way you know exactly which button will be able to select for an app in order to play with it. But I have to mention, once you set these color things up, 
you cannot use these colors inside of bus tv because it's really mandatory for you to have it something like yellow will be able to create favorites and green will give you other different type of powers inside of the bus tv app so make sure that if you really need to set these up and you're not going to use bus tv app then it will be making sense for you to set these buttons up except that keep it as default there is one more thing called update control software which you already seen that we have updated it first thing as soon as we turn on the box for very first time and this is where you're going to be able to check to see if you do have an update or not except that you can see the latest update on this the current firmware that they're running on this remote is version 07 is right over here and then the remote is connected as bluetooth and my battery is 100 percent yes not more not less but a hundred percent because it's brand new batteries that i just entered this is where you will be able to check exactly how much battery you got so it makes it very simple for you to check everything under one app all right so the next thing we're going to cover is going to be the live tv portion so for that we have to make sure that you have your already see go this is the speed test so we will launch it we have already processed some tests so let's go through it now you can see that the first thing that we tried was the 5G network. We're going to click on it. And this is the number we got for a very first time. You can see that it was down and it started going up and up. So we got roughly about 362 for our download and 51.5 for our upload, which is exceeded our upload rates. Now when we tried it one more time, we got even better numbers, which is about 412 and you can see that it was going up and down about 300 and then it stuck to the number and then our upload rate was still really good so if i have to scroll up a little bit you can see my idol was only 16 which is called ping in this case and then when we tried it with the LAN connection that is part of the actual unit itself we got about 94 for our download and you can see that's very nice and steady and our upload was 53 which is really good now when we tried it one more time it went down a very very little bit to 93.8 but our upload rate went up a little bit which is really good and again our ping was a little bit lower than before which is really good now we didn't just stop there now we have a little connection from the old units that we used to use called Ugreen and that one is a gigabit LAN to it. So we thought, you know what, let's connect this to the USB 2.0 and see what type of numbers we're going to get as a LAN connection using the USB. So when we tried it very, very first time, we got... 275 i am just giggling because this is really good numbers and it started going up and you can see that our upload rate was 53.4 which is exceeding and then once we tried the last time we got 271 again this is from a lan connection and then our upload rate was about 54 and our ping was about 13 which is really good numbers when it comes to this type of app so this was our speed test now, this was all our take from Exitech's point of view. This is a review for Buzz TV's HD5, and I really enjoy playing with these type of things. So if you have any kind of recommendation, please bring it in the bottom of the video. Please don't be sarcastic when it comes to comments. Be very accurate, and if you have a question, please ask. And just be very accurate if you have it use that how do you like it please let us know it really helps us out and if you have another recommendation for a video please ask we love to do that for you guys except that this was our take i hope you guys like our video if you do like it click the click the like button subscribe button on the top comment on the bottom always remember to visit our own website which is exitex.info like us on facebook follow us on twitter instagram and other social networking places and thank you